Okay, so the first talk of the session is new ways to Garbo's arithmetic circuit. And uh, this, uh, this uh, paper is by Marshall Ball, Ajun Lee, Ujalin, and Tiaren Liu. And uh, uh, Ajun Lee is giving the talk. Yeah, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm Han Jun. Uh, yeah, today I'm presenting our paper, New Ways to Garbo Arithmetic Circuit. And it's a joint work, as she said, with Marshall. Uh, and my advisor, Rachel, and uh, Tianren. First, let's start by uh, recalling the classical Yaw's garbling for Boolean circuit. So given a Boolean circuit C, the garbler computes some garbled C, C hat, plus uh, n pairs of input keys, AI and BI. So we will encode each input bit into a label LI by selecting one of the keys uh, according to the bit. Next, the evaluator given C hat and the input labels is able to compute C of X. And the security requires that this is the only uh, thing that the evaluator should learn. We note two uh, features of the input encoding. First, it's decomposable, meaning that the labels LI each is computed from uh, uh, input bit XI separately. Second, uh, the labels have a short dimension that's independent of the circuit size C. So the beautiful work of Applebaum, Ishai, and Kushlevitz from 2014 defines garbling for the arithmetic circuit, where the gates are now multiplication and addition over elements from some ring R. Uh, in this, uh, this shows up naturally in scientific computation, machine learning, and crypto systems. In their definition, the gobbler uh, computes C hat as well as n alpha and label functions instead of the uh, key pairs in the Boolean case. And the rest of the requirement are analogous. In particular, the evaluator given C hat and n labels each evaluated on an uh, input value xi is able to compute C of x and nothing more. And we note that uh, this input encoding preserves the good property of Yao. Namely, it's also decomposable, and we require that the labels have short dimension uh, independent of the circuit. So in their paper, they construct a, a scheme for B-bounded integer computation uh, where the gates, multiplication, and addition are compute, computed over Z, but we always assume the wire value to be uh, bounded by some exponentially large B. And their solution uh, uses LW assumption. So why do we prefer such a uh, definition for arithmetic garbling over the simple baseline solution that just converts the circuit C into equivalent Boolean circuit C prime and apply Yaw to garble it? Well, first, uh, the Boolean circuit requires bit representation of its input values, which may be inconvenient sometimes. Second, this conversion from arithmetic gates into specific Boolean uh, circuit implementing them is concretely uh, very expensive. And in fact, there are many implementations that are suitable for different range of the wire values. So we want to avoid this conversion. Uh, in our work, we uh, build upon the, the paradigm introduced in AIK, and we construct new arithmetic gobbling solutions. In doing so, we bring a new technique for garbling. Well, our solution also make black box use of the uh, ring, ring operations, hence avoids the Boolean conversion. Uh, overall, we improve the efficiency, modularity, and flexibility over existing solutions for garbling arithmetic circuits. So before going to our uh, result, I'll first define a metric for efficiency called the rate of garbling. Uh, it's computed as the rate, as the ratio between uh, the garbled C hat plus the label, the input labels, divided by the circuit representation in the clear, uh, and by L, which is the bit length of the elements in R. Uh, you can think of the term C times L as the cost of writing out the entire computation just in the clear. As an example, uh, Yaw's garbling has rate. O of KSKE, where KSKE represents the size of a ciphertext from a symmetric key scheme. And uh, the baseline solution has rate log L because the best uh, Boolean circuit for integer multiplication 
already has a size L log L. And our result, our first solution, our first construction is a governing scheme for B-bounded uh, integer computation as, consider, as considered in the AIK work, uh, assuming DCR in the Pioneer group. We have rate one plus K DCR over L, where K DCR is the security parameter for Pioneer. So when L is large, this rate becomes a constant and we obtain the first constant rate governing for arithmetic circuits. So for comparison, the scheme in AIK has rate O of KLWE, where this is the uh, secret dimension of LWE. Ours is also the first constant rate garbling for circuits in general without assuming I.O. Uh, yeah, to, I, will first, I will just note two related work uh, that also achieve low rate garbling, and they are both in the Boolean setting. The first work has rate one over L, uh, assuming I.O. The second work also has rate one over L, but for wide circuits. Their scheme has a large input labels of size uh, that's polynomial in the depth of the circuit. So for deep circuit, their rate is uh, not constant. Uh, our second result is a garbling scheme for ZP computation, and we can either have rate O of K DCR uh, for large L, or uh, rate O tilde of K L W E. And uh, our, our construction is the first garbling for ZP computation that makes black box use of the underlying ring operations. Our third result consider garbling circuits that consists of both arithmetic gates and the general Boolean computation gates, and uh, also the bit decomposition gate for connecting those two type of computations. We can garble the arithmetic gates uh, and the Boolean gates uh, with rate achieved by our theorem one uh, and the rate achieved by all, respectively. Uh, but to, to garble the bit decomposition gate is more expensive and uh, its rate is shown on the slides. Uh, for concrete efficiency, we briefly compare our constant rate scheme under Pylear with the baseline solution uh, using the most, uh, the state of art Boolean garbling scheme. And we also compare with the scheme of BMR16, which at a high level they use uh, Chinese remainder theorem to break up a uh, multiplication mo over large integers into multiplication module small primes, P1 to PK, and garble them individually. So uh, I will just show a concrete setting where, where L is very large, roughly 4,000 bit. And in this concrete setting, uh, we can see that the other two solutions require 10 and 50 megabytes to garble a multiplication gate whereas ours require only uh, 18 kilobytes. So uh, roughly it's 600 and 800 times smaller. Uh, when we consider even larger L, our, our advantage also is, is greater. As for computation cost, I will just briefly say that our scheme takes uh, thousands of multiplication in the Pioneer group, whereas the other two scheme use AES calls and they take roughly one million AES costs in this setting. So next, uh, I will introduce the AIK paradigm, which our work also uh, build up on. And then I will give first the high level idea for constructing the core component called the key extension gadget, uh, and followed by our construction for this gadget in the bounded integer setting from Pioneer. I will mostly skip the construction for ZP uh, but I will, note the high, uh, I will note the technical challenge there. So the AIK paradigm uh, basically says to have garbling over R, it's, it's enough to have uh, gadgets for garbling arithmetic gates individually, plus the key extension gadget. Uh, the gadget for uh, individual gate are relatively simple and uh, they're, they're, they're known from prior work. Uh, here I will just show the multiplication gate as an example. So the gobbler is given a uh, target label function L and is supposed to engineer two input labels so that they can be combined uh, to reveal L and nothing else by the evaluator. 
uh, I will skip the construction here since it's just prior work. But the important thing to note is that in this gadget, uh, the label dimension of the input labels are twice the dimension of the target label. So if we try to use this gadget, uh, compose them to handle a circuit, we'll see that the label dimension doubles after every layer of multiplication. So over, uh, in general, it becomes exponential in the circuit depth. Uh, it's also linear in the fan out of the wire. This restricts us to the log depth circuit using the gadgets alone. And that's why we need a key extension. So uh, a, a gobbler, uh, given a very long target label function L, can run this gadget to compute, to output a short label function S together with the garble table. And the evaluator can, can recover the long S, uh, can use the short label S to recover the much longer label L. Then back to our previous example, whenever the label dimension becomes too long, we uh, attach a key extension gadget here to bring the dimension back down to T. Then we can continue in this fashion to garble a deep circuit. So what remaining is to design a key extension gadget for R. Uh, our high level idea for the construction is to uh, use a symmetric key encryption scheme that additionally has a linear homomorphism over the key space and the message space. Uh, given such a scheme, uh, the gobbler can encrypt the coefficient vectors of L uh, into CT1 and 2 under short keys A and B, respectively. And for now, I would just also assume the value X is public to the gadget, uh, to the evaluator. Then the evaluator can use the homomorphism to compute a new ciphertext using CT1 and 2, such that it encrypts exactly the label L in the message space under the key S, and he then decrypts uh, to recover L. But here I'm assuming the LHE scheme to have a message space equals R, so that the label L is evaluated correctly by the homomorphism. And also, the the, the short key received by the evaluator is also computed over R, hence we would like the key space to also be R. Uh, but in fact, our instantiation will have a different key space than the message space, which creates a technical issue with resolve. Uh, we have also been cheating a little bit to assume the value X is public. Is this uh, secure? We can always add a random value to the X before uh, every key extension gadget in the circuit and subtract it later. Uh, by, the, by the security of the addition gadget, R remains hidden so that it's, it's okay to reveal X to the, to the, to the key extension gadget. Uh, next, to instantiate, to instantiate this idea uh, from Pioneer, I will first, first give some background on the Pioneer group which is defined to be Z star modulo n to the C plus one, uh, where C is a, is a integer and n is a product of two safe primes. The important fact uh, about the group G is that the subgroup of quadratic residues factors into a hard subgroup and the easy subgroup. And we will, we will encode the, our messages in the exponent of the easy subgroup, where the discrete log is easy. And we hide the, the easy component using a hard, hard group component. Security relies on the DCR assumption, which says that uh, a random hard group element is indistinguishable from a random element from the entire group. Uh, okay, so applying this idea, we get a very simple LHE scheme uh, where the secret key A is a secret exponent in the hard group, and we encode the message in the easy subgroup. Since both the key and uh, the message are in the exponent, uh, we have this homomorphism as we wanted. And as uh, I hinted before, the message space here is Z modulo n to the C, but the key space is Z modulo P prime Q prime, and they are not, not equal. In fact, for the evaluator, the, mod the key modulus P prime Q prime are unknown to it, 
Hence, effectively, the evaluator needs to recover the key AX plus B uh, computed over Z. Okay, so using uh, this LHE scheme uh, with our high-level idea, the gobbler computes two ciphertext for C and D using uh, short keys A and B, which are two integer exponent uh, in, in the Pylier case. For security reason, we also need to sample the key B uh, from a larger, larger range than A so that it hides A statistically. Now, the evaluator given X and the gobble table can homomorphically compute the ciphertext uh, CT, but to decrypt it, uh, we have mentioned that he needs uh, the, the key AX plus B computed over Z, but only have it uh, modulo some N to the C. So if he can recover this S prime over Z, then he can decrypt. Uh, this is in fact easy to solve in the B bounded setting because our assumption is that the value of X is bounded and the key A and B are both sampled from a bounded range. So as long as we set the, the message modulus into the C large enough, then A plus X B, uh, AX plus B never wraps around and S equals to S prime always. So after solving this issue, we have obtained a key extension gadget for bounded integer using Pylier. Uh, for ZP computation, we have the same issue, but it's much more challenging to solve exactly because we don't have the assumption uh, on the bundle of value X anymore. So in fact, the key AX plus B uh, is very likely to be larger than the message modulus P, and uh, to solve this issue requires more involved technique, which you can read in our paper. Uh, yeah, to summarize, we have three uh, results. The first is the constant rate gobbling for bounded integer computation from Pylier. The second is a gobbling scheme for ZP computation, and it's the first such scheme making black box use of the underlying ring operations. Uh, the third, uh, we can handle a circuit with both arithmetic and general Boolean computation gates in this mixed computation model. Uh, th this concludes my talk. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Are there any questions? Um, so you mentioned have, doing the uh, information theoric scheme for uh, log depth uh, pieces of the circuit. Yep. Uh, how do you choose how big of a piece of the circuit to use for that? Is it like control some efficiency trade-off or is there an optimal way to set it? Or? Mm. I see. In the paper, we just do it after every multiplication as well as addition because uh, the, the, the label dimension is linear also in the finite. So after uh, even the addition gate, the dimension can grow to arbitrarily large if you okay. have a large finite. So we we'll always do it after every gate. Uh, maybe there is a trade -off, an optimal way, way to set it. If you know the finite, then probably. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the nice presentation. I have a question regarding point three here. Do we still need some kind of arithmetic to Boolean uh, conversion here? Or is this a f uh, for free uh, in your new gobbling scheme? Yeah, for three, we're thinking of the gates to have like two types. The ar arithmetic gates, we'll do it using our arithmetic mm -hmm. uh, gadget. And for the Boolean computation gate, they're already represented in the Boolean circuit, so we'll just garble it using yaw. And we don't convert between arithmetic gate to the specific Boolean uh, implementation of it. So you are using that Boolean thing as a black box? Mm. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.
Okay, our second talk is actively secure half gates with minimum overhead under duplex networks. And uh, uh, Ungri Q is uh, giving the talk. Thanks for the introduction. This is a joint work with Jiawang, Kang Yang, and Yu Yu. We'll begin with the background of this work. Since the proposal of garbled circuit in the 80s, there has been numerous works improving the communication of semi-honest half gates. In the malicious world, however, the progress has been lagging behind. Before 2017, the dominant approach is different kinds of cut and choose, where we have to pay a multiplicative overhead related to RU, the statistical parameter. A major breakthrough is authenticated gobbling proposed by Wang et al. in CCS 2017. In AG, we authenticate the gobbled circuit using message authentication code with the help of a preprocessing functionality, usually uh, initially instantiated by TinyOT. And if you listen to Nicola's talk, afterwards, generating OT-like correlations has been greatly accelerated by pseudo-random correlation generators. So a natural idea, which was studied by Dismer et al. in last year's crypto, is to generate authentica uh, authenticated gobbling from PCGs. In the DLO paper, we can get amortized communication of two kappa plus eight row bits in the VOLE hybrid model, or two kappa plus four row bits in the multiplication hybrid model. Here, kappa is the computational parameter. The progress is significant compared to prior art, but compared with semi-honest half gates, there is still a gap. So a natural question is, can we close this gap? In this work, we partially answer the question by proposing an authenticated gobbling protocol with one-way communication of two kappa plus five bits per AND gate, essentially matching the semi-honest half gates. We begin by optimizing the DLO preprocessing protocol, reducing the communication of from, two, from five rule plus five, plus one bits to two bits per AND gate. Then, building on this preprocessing protocol, we can apply the dual execution to perform consistency checking without introducing the usual one bit of leakage. Or we can use the DLO online protocol to get a variant that is optimized towards total communication. For the rest of this talk, I will explain the high-level ideas of our optimization. We'll begin with the gobbling notations. In semi-honest GC, the gobbler Alice can mount selective failure attack to learn the masked capital lambda value. And since she controls all the wire masks, the small lambda, she learns the true value Z, Z violating privacy. The solution to this is to secret share the masks lambda between Alice and Bob so that the masked lambda value appears uniformly random. So Alice learns no information from it. Alice, Alice can also gobble different logic in the truth tables, and the solution is to essentially authenticate the, gobble, the gobbling process under the evaluator Bob's global key. To facilitate these two countermeasures, we'll need a preprocessing functionality to sample the global keys and the wire masks. The hat value denotes the secret share of the input wire mask product for each AND gate. Uh, in this presentation, we use the puzzle notation for the ID mark, where the red piece denotes the mark tag and the blue piece denotes the mark key. With this information, the two parties can evaluate the garbled circuit as usual. Alice also prepares a, an additional authenticated, uh, an additional garbled circuit for the consistency checking purposes. In a subsequent crypto paper, the, com the online communication of the previous slide, which was, which is four kappa plus four root bits, is optimized to two kappa plus one bits. 
the first observation is that with preprocessing, we can construct a distributed version of half gates. This reduces the circuit evaluation cost from four row bits to, to uh, from four kappa bits to two kappa plus one bits. The second observation is that now that the capital lambda value appears uniformly random, Bob can open it, and when these values are public, the error term on each end gate becomes linearly expressible using all the IT mark authenticated values. And thus, we can do a batch zero checking on all the error terms, essentially performing consistency check for free. So that's authenticated gobbling. Our next ingredient is PCGs for the subfield VLE correlation. In this correlation, Alice and Bob secret shares the product between a vector in the subfield and a scalar in the extension field. For P equals two, we also call it correlated OT. Current PCG protocols can generate this correlation for a random U vector with great efficiency. This implies that we can authenticate a large random vector essentially for free, or we can authenticate any given vector by sending the difference. Alice can also prove low degree cor uh, polynomial correlation uh, on the U vector using designated verifier zero knowledge protocol with good efficiency. Uh, I would like to mention that there are PCG protocols for the W authenticated multiplication triple correlation, but current constructions based on ring LPN incur a root time overhead when generating Boolean triples. So we only consider COT type correlation in this work. Uh, and now we recall the DLO protocol, which serves as a starting point for our optimization. Recall that in, in selective failure attack, Alice corrupts some row of the garbled truth table in order to learn the corresponding capital lambda values, the masked wire values. Uh, if B is uniformly random, so is lambda, so she learns no information from this attack. But as it turns out, using uniform randomness is an overkill because if Alice corrupts too many rows, then Bob would abort with overwhelming, overwhelming probability. So the observation in the LLO is that it suffices for B to be rule-wise independent because this guarantees any rule sized subset of the circuit wires to be fully maxed. And for larger subsets, Bob would work with probability except one over two to the row. The second observation in the ILO is that we may get rule wise independence by linearly expanding a much shorter vector B star. To implement the preprocessing functionality, we may sample A, B, and A hat from random and compute B hat vector from these values. Now that the B vector is linearly compressed, there are only a handful of terms that make up of B hat, and it suffices to compute the tensor product between a long vector A and a much shorter vector B star. In DLO, we do this by encoding the B star vector in the COT global key. This can be done by using a larger extension field and applying the field isomorphism. We call the new correlation block COT. In DLO, BK hat value is computed as follows. We first authenticate the B star vector and then Bob encodes the B star vector in the block COT by choosing B star times delta B as the global key to authenticate the A and A hat vector. Using the linear homomorphism on the IT marks, we can get authentication of AI times BJ for arbitrary I and J. Then Alice authenticates the AI AJ for the end gates as well as proving its consistency and checks for consistency in Bob's global keys. Now we can define the BK tilde values. It suffices for Bob to learn the BK tilde value 
because he can locally patch it with BI10SBJ to learn the BK hat. To securely do so, Alice sends the MacTag of BK Tilde to Bob, who then locally recovers the inner authenticated value using his global key. Now Bob can locally compute BK hat. The next task is to authenticate BK hat, and once again, it suffices to authenticate BK Tilde. In DLO, we reuse the previous idea. Only this time, the task is to let Bob learn the mark tag of BK Tilde. So we essentially compute the authentication of that value denoted by this larger puzzle piece. So Alice would send this value to Bob, who locally recovers the inner authenticated value using his global key. And this time, it is the mark tag of BK Tilde. And this concludes the preprocessing phase of DLO. For the online phase, recall that the B vector is now linearly compressed, so we can no longer use the very efficient KRW consistency check. So in the DLO paper, the authors optimized the previous WRK approach and managed to cut one row from the gobbled table for authentication purposes and combined with distributed half gates, this gives an online phase with two kappa plus three rule bits per AND gate. Now let's try to optimize this protocol. We'll begin with the preprocessing phase. Here we list all the communication that linearly scales with the number of AND gates in DLO preprocessing. Notice that in the red box, four rule bits are spent to authenticate the BK tilde values. This is rather counterintuitive because we can do this by calling the fix command, which only takes one bit per AND gate. The problem is that Bob may use inconsistent, inconsistent inputs, and we need to check for this inconsistency. Uh, also notice that in this protocol, we generate authentication of A times delta A and delta B, and that is equivalent to A authenticated by delta A times delta B. And since the product is unknown to neither parties, neither party can alter the inside values. We call it dual key authentication and denote it using angled brackets. Suppose we have some method to generate the dual key authentication of BK tilde, then consistency check can be done very efficiently by simply opening the collapsed and mask it BK tilde values and check for consistency against the dual key authentication of BK tilde. So the problem reduces to generate such dual key authentication. Reusing the previous observation, we only need to compute a handful of terms. We can begin by secret sharing the right terms. This can be done in the COT functionality using the, the fix command, as shown here. We rename the fix command outputs as alpha and beta. Bob can then use the beta values as the block COT global keys to authenticate A and A hat. Alice can locally patch, lo can locally patch her shares with A times alpha to get the dual key shares. The problem is to check for consistency be between the block COT global keys and the COT outputs. Turns out this can be done very efficiently because the COT outputs are already implicitly authenticated by the inverse of delta A. By multiply, multiplying both sides with delta A inverse. And Alice can also authenticate the block COT global keys using the fix command. And the checking for equality between values authenticated under independent keys can be done using ex existing methods. Now we present the entire preprocessing protocol and also explain how the first rule bit of communication can be reduced. We first run a sampling protocol to sample the global keys subject to this constraint. Then we run the COT and block COT functionalities as mentioned above. And we can define the dual key authentication of BKTelda now. 
Alice then simply sends the least significant bit of her dual key share to Bob, who can locally recover the, dual, the BK tilde values due to the constraint we introduced during sampling. Now, Bob simply authenticates these BK tilde values, and finally, we perform consistency checks. The first two checks have already been mentioned. The third one checks for consistency in the LSB messages, while the fourth one checks the fixed messages. Both checks are made possible by the properties of dual key authentication. And finally, let's try to optimize the online phase. Recall that in DLO, Alice has to send additional three row bits for consistency checking. And a natural idea to perform a consistency check without exacerbating while the communication is dual, key, is dual execution. In dual ex execution, we run two instances of the goblet circuit protocol with swapped rows. And in the end of the protocol, we check for consistency in the circuit outputs. Unfortunately, however, by only checking the output, the adversary may gobble a different circuit that only yields equal outputs for certain inputs. And this leads to one bit of leakage in the honest party's input values. Fortunately, this problem can be mitigated by using distributed gobbling. Since in distributed gobbling, each wire, masks are, each wire mask is authenticated. And we also discovered that the, the wire labels uh, implicitly constitute as authentication for the masked wire values due to the free XOR constraint. Uh, this notation appeared previously in the literature as garbled sharing. Now that the true value for each wire is authenticated, we may check for consistency across the entire circuit, and this ensures the correct circuit is gobbled, eliminating the one bit of leakage. So in summary, we optimized the DLO protocol using dual key authentication and dual execution. As a main result, we achieved two cover plus five bits of one-way communication, and by combining our Preprocessing protocol with the online protocol of DILO, we get two cover plus three root plus four bits of total communication. So that concludes my talk. Thanks for your listening. Thank you for the talk. We have time for a quick question. Yeah. Total. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. So our last talk is half three, halving the cost of tree expansion in COT and DPF. And uh, Xiao Zhou Gu is giving the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Xiao Zhe Gu and today I'm going to introduce half three, halving the cost of tree expansion in COT and DPF. This is my joint work with Kang Yang, Xiao Wang, Wen Hao Zhang, Xiang Xie, Jiang Zhang, and Er Li Liu. So let's begin with our motivation of this paper. And as, as we will see, GGM tree has been used to generate correlated randomness with sublinear communication. However, GGM tree has no algebraic structure so that we, can, we have no opportunity to optimize the uh, efficiency of the previous protocols. Here, GGM tree is stretched from a root K using length doubling PRG. Here, we use G0 and G1 for its two halves. 
And the, uh, uh, the R fast leaf is, value, uh, is defined to be the recursive PRG evaluation according to the bit decomposition of alpha. And uh, there are many useful correlated readiness from GGM tree, including correlated oblivious transfer, subfield vector OLE, distributed point function, and distributed comparison function. Here we use COT, SVLE, DPF, and DCF for short. And there has been many MPC applications using this corrected randomness. And in this work, we propose more efficient protocols for the four kinds of correlated randomness. And the core idea is that we can introduce actual correlation to the GGM tree so that some of its nodes are summed to a global offset. And we will see how this global offset can be used to optimize the efficiency. And in this work, we consider the semi-honest VOC security in the random permutation model. And the random permutation model is usually implemented using fixed key AES in practice. And we know that the malicious security can also be obtained by using corresponding consistency check. And here we summarize, and here we summarize our improvements on computation, communication, and round complexity. We know that for COT and SVLE, we only measure uh, com computation in the number of AES calls for tree expansion and do not consider the cost of LLP encoding. And according to the previous works, the computation for tree expansion can be significant. And in a concurrent work by Boyle et al., the, the authors also consider how to optimize the computation using modified GGM tree. However, their work require, uh, require random oracle model or some ad hoc conjecture, and they do not consider how to improve the communication. In contrast, our work works in the random permutation model for both COT and the SVLE, and uh, with both improvements in computation and communication. Okay, let's begin with the uh, brief recall of the how can we construct COT or SVLE. Here, SVLE is parameterized by a field F and its extension field K, and the COT is a special case of SVLE. In an SVLE correlation, um, the sender has a global key delta and, the output, uh, and the, uh, an output vector V, while the receiver has two output vectors U and W. And in a previous blueprint of SVLE, one can obtain SVLE from single point SVLE plus LPN encoding. Here, the, uh, the single point SVLE stands for a spatial SVLE where the vector U has exactly one non zero entry. And for example, we can consider regular LPN noise with dual LPN assumption. And here, the two parties set up many single point SVLE correlations and combine them into longer vectors. Then they can use local LPN encoding metrics to turn these three vectors into the output vectors V, U, and W. And these three vectors correspond to uh, the target SVLE correlation with respect to the global key delta. And the key point is that how can we set up a single point COT or SVLE efficiently? Uh, in the previous work, the sender has to set up a GGM tree and use its leaf nodes as its output vectors V. And the receiver picks a random point alpha and uses its negative bit decomposition to, for, uh, to select the left or the right sum for each level uh, of the sender's GM tree. This allows the receiver to level by level recover the uh, all, 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 all leaf nodes except the alpha's one. And to patch the punctured point, in the single point COT, the sender needs to send one additional message. And in the single point SVLE, the two parties require one pseudo random SVLE, which picks the global key data for the sender. And the sender still needs to send one additional message. And in this work, we can replace the, C the, the GGM tree with the correlated GGM tree. Here, the correlated the correlated GM tree has a nice property that all the sum level nodes are summed to a global offset delta. And to maintain this property, we can define for each node and the, its, left, its, its left trial node as h of x and the, and the right trial to be x minus h of x. 
Here, H stands for hash function, and we can use the construction from a GKWY. In this construction, uh, pi is modeled as random permutation, and the sigma is modeled as the efficiently computable linear isomorphism. And let's, let's see how we can construct single point CLT from CGM tree. Here, the sender constructs a CGM tree with the global of set delta, and the receiver interacts with the sender using delta CLT instead of the sender, standard OT in the previous works. Here, the delta CLT picks the random point alpha for the receiver, and, and, and the receiver can recover all leaf nodes except the alpha one using the same computation as the previous works. However, in the delta CLT, we can, key, we can use the, the, the same global key as the global offset of the CGM tree. And this has the next property that in the delta CLT, we can use one preprocessed random CLT. And uh, then in this way, the sender only sends, one, uh, only sends lambda bits messages to the receiver, and the receiver can use this message to recover the left or the right sum of the sender's GM tree for each level. And in contrast, in the previous work, even in the CLT hybrid model, and the sender needs to send two lambda bits. And that's why we can save the communication for the previous single point CLT. And let's have a look on the CGM tree based the single point CLT. The semi honest security is straightforward for the corrupted sender, but however, there is a subtle issue if the receiver is corrupted. The reason is that the environment can lens the global offset data from the only sender's output. And in the real world, there is a consistency with respect to this data. And however, in the ideal world, this consistency does not hold with overwhelming property due to the random transcript simulated by the simulator. However, we notice that the hash function is constructed from the random permutation, so the environment has to query the random permutation or its inverse to detect this inconsistency. So we can address this issue by relaxing the single point CLT functionality to allow the global key query on data. Then the simulator can extract every possible data from the queries to the random permutation or its inverse and interact with the ideal functionality to guess each extracted data. Finally, the simulator can program the random permutation or its inverse uh, to be consistent with the ideal world data. And our single point CLT from CGM tree can also be extended to realize a single point SVLE if we assume the two parties have, a one, have access to one preprocessed pre random SVLE. Here, the, uh, this, this random SVLE picks the global key delta and the uh, global offset k beta for the sender. And the sender constructs a CGM tree from the k beta uh, using the k-beta for the global set. And the, the two parties interact using k-beta as VLE. Here, the k-beta as VLE still select the random alpha for the receiver, and the receiver can recover all, uh, all, all leaf nodes except the alpha one. And in the construction of this k-beta as VLE, we require one spatial as VLE uh, with the global key k-beta. And uh, this spatial SVLE is to ensure that the choice bit Ri or, or, or R, R, alpha i is a uh, uniform bit. And using k beta SVLE, the sender only sends one additional message to the receiver. And the receiver can use this, one, use this message to recover the left or the right sum of the sender's GGM, uh, CGM tree for each level. And of course, we 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 also use how uh, we also consider how to use the previous blueprint for, to construct single point CLT uh, SVLE. And this blueprint requires re pursue the random of path nodes and the pursue the random puncture leaf. Unfortunately, this pursue the randomness does not hold in our CGM tree. But fortunately, we can modify our CGM tree to ensure this property. And we call a modified CGM tree pseudo-random CGM tree, or PCGM tree for short. 
In this TCGM tree, the first n minus one levels are the same as the CGM tree, but we break the last level correlation using additional hash evaluation. Concretely, for a node X on the, on the n minus one level, we define its left, left child to be H of X and the right child to be H of X or X or one. And in this, in, in this conjunction, we have three of past nodes x1 to x3, and the one puncture leave x3 prime. And it, it's easy to see that x3, x2, x3, and x3 prime has the form of circular correlation robustness. And uh, this, uh, this, correlation, uh, this CCR with respect to delta works through as, as that. Here, the global of set, the, the global of set uh, in the PCGM tree is delta, but this delta is not the global key of the single point CLT, uh, SVLE, so that we can make a reduction to the C CCR gain and to ensure the uh, pseudo randomness of these nodes. Now we go to the DPF and its protocol. Here the, D, uh, here the point function f of alpha beta is evaluated to beta if the input x is equals to alpha. And the distributed point function is a function secret sharing of f alpha beta with the following two phases. In the, in the first phases, there is a trusted dealer or a secure protocol distributing DPF keys to the two parties. And in the second phase, each party uses its DPF keys to perform local full domain evaluation to obtain its additive secret share of a vector R. And by summing the two, uh, the sum of the two additive shares gives a vector R. And this vector R is the full domain evaluation of the, puncture, uh, of the point function F alpha beta. In the previous work, the key, gener uh, the key generation protocol of DPF is based on secure two-party commutation and the black box evaluation technique. For example, uh, the, key, the DPF key of our party PB consists of an add additive share of the root and the n plus one public correction word. And a node, on a, a node of a party tree consists of lambda bits and the, the upper lambda minus one bits are used for PRG evaluation. And using this, uh, using the GGM tree algorithm, the, the each party can, can define a GGM tree and uh, use a correction to, uh, to correct its, its GGM tree. Here we use red and blue color to highlight the two kinds of correction. And the correction ensures that by summing the two parties GGM, uh, corrected GGM trees, uh, the, the summed tree has pseudo random nodes along the path alpha, and the list no and list nodes are pseudo random conditioned on the non-zero LSB. And the output uh, and the output node is cr also corrected to beta using the blue correction. And this and this correction ensures that for each level, the correction word should depend on some uh, shared bits on the alpha, and this requires to run OT base 2 pc in the distributed uh, key generation protocol. And in our, in, in our protocol, we observe that we can have a simpler correction with each CWI for the first n minus one levels. Uh, here we color the correction in green. And our correction, our correction, oh, sorry. Our tree expansion follows from the CGGM or the PCGM tree expansion for the first and minus one levels. And the correction with respect to this tree expansion ensures that for the first and minus one levels, the sum of the two parties tree shares equals a global of set delta. And this delta has a non-zero LSB. And otherwise, we have the same construction here, just, just like the red and blue correction, as the previous works. And this and this property has a uh, has a benefit for our uh, each CW for 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 each uh, for each of the first n minus one levels, as that 
uh, the first part of each CWI can be locally shared by the two parties using the black box evaluation technique. And the second part of each CWI can be com securely computed in parallel for, the, for all of the first n minus one levels. As a result, each CWI can be securely computed, computed in a amortized one round and has CCR phone to ensure its pseudo randomness. And now let's go to the di uh, distributed comparison function which is closely related to the distributed point function. Here a comparison function f alpha beta is also evaluated to beta if the input x is less than alpha. And distributed comparison function is a function secret sharing of f alpha beta. And we can interpret in, uh, f r the comparison function as the sum of a spatial uh, point function and a prefix function. Here the prefix function depends on the longest common prefix between alpha and x. And in the previous construction, this, uh, this prefix uh, function is implicitly computed in the DPF part for the spatial uh, point function. And let's, let's briefly recall how the previous construction works. Here the DCF key of each party consists of, consists of the DPF key with uh, an additional correction word VCW1 to VCWN. And in, in, in the tree expansion, each node spawns two additional child nodes using length quadru quadrupling PRG. And, the, the, and these additional DCF nodes are also corrected to ensure that by summing these, uh, these additional nodes along the path alpha and the output of the DCF part, uh, this gives a re evaluation result of the comparison function f alpha beta. And to ensure this, to ensure this uh, correction works, uh, each VCW should also depend on some bit of the R, some bit of the alpha, and this bit is, sec uh, is secret shared in the distributed protocols. And that is, we need two round OT best two PC in the distributed key generation protocols for each VCW. And in our work, we have two optimizations for DCF. The first one is that we can use our optimized DPF or, and its protocol for the DPF part. And our second optimization is that we can have a, sim a simpler correction for the DCF part. Uh, here we give an example of our second optimization. We, o we observe that one additional node is sufficient for each, part, uh, for each node and there is no need to introduce masks, masks in the shared in a shared uh, tree of the two parties. And in this way, uh, if we use this second optimization with the, first, uh, with the first one, we can also construct each VCW using the delta related CCR. And in this way, some part of the VCW can be locally shared using the black box evaluation technique of the DS17. And the, the, the other part of the VCW uh, in, uh, can be securely computed in parallel, so that we can also have we can also save the round complexity and the communication of the previous DCF construction. And that's all of my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Okay, so you mentioned uh, at the beginning that you need uh, a preprocessed random COT. Uh, how many do you need? So, oh, we uh, we only need a sublinear number of the uh, single uh, the best COT, just like the silent preprocessing by the previous works. And then to obtain, you obtain how many single points? Uh, we need random. Uh, we need random CLT for to obtain single point CLT, and the number of the random CLT is sublinear in the length of the single the, our final single point CLT. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. More questions? Okay. So let's thank you, the speaker, again.